McMillan here at the Black Magic booth for our first interview of NAB 2024. I'm here with Bob Cornelia, and he's going to run us through the new exciting cameras that uh, Black Magic announced. As I'm sure you've seen, uh, probably one of the more exciting announcements I've seen from any company in recent memory. And I'm not generally someone who uh, gets excited about those kind of things. So uh, why don't you, I guess we'll start here. Sure. And I also want to talk about the 65 because that's silly. Uh, yeah. Um, but so this is the, what, the 13th? This, this is the new Ursa Cine 12K. 12K. Uh, it's a new 12K sensor for us. So it's large format. So it's larger than Super 35. And what it does is it allows us to, basically we put everything we wanted to put in a camera in a camera. So this camera has the ability to record both uh, Blackmagic RAW and proxies. Uh, we have built-in Wi-Fi, so you're able to transmit directly from the camera to the Blackmagic cloud server so people can start editing right away. Amazing. Uh, we have three different mounts. We have LPL mount, we have a PL mount, and an EF mount. Uh, it has two screens on it. This is, this is the main uh, screen that is fully articulating, spin around. Um, and what it also shows you is our recording uh, media. So this is our, our, our media dock. So you can record uh, this comes with one that is eight terabytes, which would give you about four four hours of 12K, uh, which is awesome. And that comes standard or is that a... So a one uh, eight terabyte dock comes with it. Wonderful. Yeah. So we also have a second screen on the other side. Oh, wow. And so this one, it even has a little shade that you can use. So this one is for the focus Operator. puller, yeah. you know, so they have, and they can actually make marks uh, on the screen so they can go between the settings. Just with the plus button there? Yep. So there's- That's a, awesome. Yeah. So there- And it has the lens name there and everything. Exactly, gives you all the data. Um, you can see anything you want on this side. There's a full menu to, to, to get in there. That's rad. Yeah, so it really has some great feedback and we have different connectors depending on other devices people want to uh, put on it. We also uh, came out with a new EVF. So this is the Ursa right. Cine EVF. And this one, <laughs> yeah, spinning yeah, like, around. Oh, uh, yeah, so this has a different design. It, it plugs into a locking USB-C port and uh, the camera is sold in two different versions. Uh, one includes the EVF. So you can get it with the EVF and, and the gear necessary to do that. So it really is a camera that uh, fits a lot of different um, segments you know, for digital film camera and you, at the 17, cent, uh, 17, I mean 12K sensor rather, yeah. uh, is able to shoot full frame 12K, 8K and 4K with, uh, because it uses the full sensor to, to derive those uh, resolutions. Mm -hmm. And it's got a whole bunch of different resolutions that you can record to, uh, anamorphic, it, it has a really wide variety of, of things to do. It's, it's really uh, a completely different design than the original Ursa Mini. So that's why it's the Ursa Cine, uh, just built for Cine work, and here it is. And it does feel, is the body the same? It, for some no. reason, it feels smaller. No, it's a different different body, and it- uh, and Than the 12K. Than the original uh, Ursa, Cine, uh, Ursa Mini 12Ks, yes, it is a di different body. And uh, again, it has some different features to it, like the articulating screen and the second screen. Right. And, uh, but, you know, we, we, we basically uh, build it with a lot of different um, aspects to it, you know, the built-in Wi-Fi and things like that. Uh, a couple of different lens mounts, the new- ND? Yeah, there are, yeah. So it's a, it's a mechanical ND filter. Mm. There's an optical low-pass filter on, on the uh, sensor itself. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a very cool cinema camera that I think a lot of people are, uh, it ticks a lot of the boxes that people have been asking for. Yeah, so how many stops of? The ND? 16. Oh, oh the uh, ND is uh, 0, 2, 4, and 6. Okay. Yeah. A decent amount. And then um, 16 stops of dynamic range. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, high frame rate. What's the max frame rate? Let's say it. Well, top speed and then let's I say think, 4K. I think at HD you can do 180. Uh, okay. Yeah, 4K is, uh, I think, 120. So, it, you know, it depends on the, there's a lot of different variables yeah, to yeah. how fast you can go, but it does quite a different, quite a large number of, um, of, uh, of aspects and, and frame rates and whatnot. Yeah, and so is this, something I always ask about viewfinders, this only works with this camera? Or is there a way to make the USB go to like, a different brand. No, it, it's designed to work with uh, the Ursa Cine 12K as mm -hmm. well as our new Pixus 6K. Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to switch sides with you just because I Go have ahead. never actually looked at it. Oh, and then the XLR is on top. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, I'm very much enjoying the uh, the AC side. 
thing. That is a very cool, uh, you got your slate, of course. Is there a new um, kind of firmware for everything or is this kind of the same uh, well, so, OS that we're so used to? We use the same Blackmagic OS, which is what people kind of have learned, right? right. So it's the same kind of uh, structure. Now, obviously there's different you know things. You don't have 9K, uh, right? 9K, right. 8K, 4K, there's different aspect ratios. But the, the way that we get through menus is the same across all the products, which helps people because, you know, if you move to a, if you're, a, you know, a, your assistant on one show and, and then you move and they have a different Blackmagic camera, it doesn't matter. You, you, you know the menus. And, right. and, and so we want to keep that and it goes across all of them. Obviously, there's different uh, settings on this camera than there would be on some of the other ones. Sure. And so top speed is 12K 3.2. Right. Awesome. And that's probably where our anamorphic would be uh, happy. There's also anamorphic down here um oops oh that's that's not a two four one crop that's that's the anamorphic one. well that's there's two four one there's also and then, six five which is rad oh, <laughs> the other ones um oops there's oh i see when you're in you get depends on what you're shooting sure. as to what uh resolution that you get on all of them right gotcha. so you know, you get a move to It is nice that different... it's dummy proof and it just tells you like that. Oh, well, <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, nope, stop trying that. Uh, yeah. You're not going to get there. So it, it just, um, there's a lot of different, uh, obviously a lot of different uh, aspect ratios, frame rates, right. whatever. It's uh, Also something work. I like is, oops, uh, when you went here, it shows you that that's going to be a, is that showing that there's going to be a crop on the sensor or that's just a visual representation? That's a visual being... representation that you're getting the full 3-2. That's the full 3-2 aspect of, okay. the, of the sensor. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Brad. And then no yeah. compressed, it's just raw or proxy. So in the raw files, though, you do have a selection of different um, bit rates. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, 3 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 18 to 1. Sure. And, uh, but it also records proxies at the same time, and you can upload both of them from the camera. Wonderful. All right, well, then let's uh, move on over sure. to the thing that I think every YouTuber on the planet rushed. <laughs> I saw about five videos of people were naming it wrong and stuff. So let's well, get all the, so the it's, actual info. <laughs> right. So this is the Blackmagic Pixis 6K camera. Okay. Now it's available in three different lens mounts. You have an L mount, an EF mount, and a PL mount. Wonderful. So on this camera though, it does have a four inch uh, HDR display on the side. Uh, you know, not all box cameras have, have a monitor included, but it's there. Right to get through the menus and things like that. Uh, it also has the ability to use the new Blackmagic Cine EVF uh, because you're able to use the locking USB-C port and add the, the EVF to it. Uh, but it's a box camera in the sense that, you know, you can mount whatever you want, kit it out any way you like. Uh, when I spin it around here, Do you can square. see that it has, <laughs> yeah, it has some, uh, it has a, a plate that comes with it. There's a second plate that comes with it to hold a USB-C drive, if you want to record to that. Mm. And then there's a, an optional rosette plate that we have. But we're confident the third party guys will come out with all kinds of things. Sure. You can uh, 3D print your own. I mean, that's a pretty simple. Absolutely. Layout. And as long as you know what what um, what uh, holes you want to, you know, for which uh, types of screw mounts and things like that, it, you can do that. It has an internet port, ethernet port rather, and a USB Port that you can either tether a phone on USB or you plug into Ethernet and send the files, both the Blackmagic RAW and the proxies, up at the same time. What, and so, it, let's say you're using your phone, you strapped to the side. Is would you down? Is there like an app that you would? Uh... So the Blackmagic Cloud service you can use, and you can log into the Blackmagic Cloud service that we have and send the files directly up there, and then people can pull them down in Resolve and start Super editing. Super cool. I'm I'm loving the fact that we have what is this two SDIs or there's one monitor? So one is uh, an SDI output, and one is time for code. time code reference in. Fantastic. So you can lock all the cameras together. Uh, it has two uh, CF Express uh, type B ports, so you can yeah. So these are great for longer record types and faster. But you can also plug in. There's two of them, so that uh, well, when one say, fills up, it kicks over to the other one automatically. Can you do dual? It doesn't do dual, but it does go from one to the other. And then because it records both uh, Blackmagic RAW and proxies at the same time, regardless of how you're recording, uh, you have oh. that. And then the USB C port. Uh, you can also plug in a, uh, a, a like a, a SSD drive if you want to do uh, even longer recording. Mm -hmm. um, it has uh, microphone input, headphone jack. It has some built-in microphones as well, um, and it 
it's uh, it's got the 6K sensor, so it's you know from the, frame the from the 6K Pro from the uh, Cinema 6K camera. Mm. Yeah, and and it records. Uh, it has an ISO range from 100 to 25,600. <laughs> Uh, cool. Dual native, 400 and 3200. So it's oh, excellent. great and low light. And yeah, it's it's uh, got the full range and a lot of the same, you know, the menus are the same as all the others. It uses the, the uh, Gen 5 color science with mm -hmm. Resolve. It comes with a copy of uh, Resolve uh, Studio. Uh, and uh, as I say, you can add a bunch of different uh, and kit it out any way that you want. Yeah. And no NDs on this one. Right. There's an optical low pass filter on the sensor, sensor, but because you're going to be kidding it out, you can add anything you want. And they're three thousand dollars, twenty nine ninety five for all. So that either, is something the I wanted to get into with this and also the sixty five is um, hmm. what is in the water in Australia? <laughs> because I, I am, again, not a fan of any particular company. Mm -hmm. However, the release of this and then the announcement of the sixty five. Yeah, is a fascinating thing for a company to, to just go for the head of the, you know, two unnamed major uh, companies. Well, yeah, see, we, we only look at it like we want to address the needs of our customers. And that's what we've done, right? I mean, we've had a lot of requests to make a box camera for years, yeah. right? But we wanted to make it, I've, I've done it. <laughs> with the right sensor and the right design and whatnot. And I think we've, we've done a really good job with that here. The, the, the new Ursa Cine camera, uh, which has the, the 12K sensor, but this new 17K sensor that's coming is allowing us to do the 65 millimeters. So now, you know, you can shoot IMAX and, you know, and I think that we, we really do have a wide array of cameras, but we've also have customers that have grown up sort of from the pocket cameras right. moving their way up. And these are two more, three more really, cameras and solutions that they're going to hopefully all evolve into. So it's really about us keeping our uh, our ear to the ground to listen to what people want. You know, we, we, we take our time, but when we do deliver, I think we do a pretty good job. Yeah, because that's the thing that I think is cool about you guys uniquely is your iterative process doesn't uh, kind of mirror some of the other companies that are maybe a little more uh, risk averse and are like, no, we're going to wait for five years before we have something fully fleshed out. Not that you guys don't have something fully fleshed out, but I, I think it's kind of yeah. cool that you go like, let's get the sensor in a body first and then we'll get the body, you know, so that every, and then the prices keep coming down. Like they're so affordable and so good. Right. Um, it's, it's a cool approach to an otherwise uh, conservative um, cameras or otherwise conservative. And we're trying to give people different options. Like the, the cinema 6K camera that we launched before, because it came in a similar body to the pockets, you could use some of the uh, accessories that we had for the pocket. Right. But it also it's, you know, it's handheld, handheld. You know, this is a little bit different because it's going to be rigged with, you know, more for, you know, tripod work really than not so much handheld. But it but because you could have both of them, you're going to get great matching images and, you know, it, it really is uh, just another step. None of them seem to replace anything. They augment and they fit in different spots. And right. I think that's one of the things that we, we try to do is give people more choices. And that's where we are. Yeah. And uh, obviously the response to these has been huge. Um, when, do, when do we know more about the 65? I'm just, uh, yeah. I'm shocked by that camera. So I, I'm right. trying to milk as much as I can. Out yeah, of <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're we we have a, sort of an end of year timeline on that one, mm. so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's a little bit against our usual announcement in terms of talking about something that's that far out, but we wanted to give people an idea of where we were headed, and sure. I think that really does give people an idea of where it's going for those that are really looking for that larger format yeah. uh, sensor. And you guys make your own sensors. You're not sourcing them from another company, right? We design we design them or, ourselves, yeah. and uh, the 17K has been in development for quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it takes time to develop all all of the rest of it. Same with the 6K as well as the the new 12K. Because there's there's uh, there's actually uh, the sensors are out on a tray out there to show you what the 6K oh, cool. sensor, the new 12K sensor, and then the 65. So it's you know it gives you a, an idea. Of, you know this new 12K sensor we're using is larger than the original one. And oh. so that's why we're able to get some other um, resolutions and, and whatnot out of it. Oh, that was one, one thing I was gonna ask about this. 
um, was I remember on the 12K or some mini mm -hmm. uh, for sort of the best, let's say, image. It was best to shoot 12K and then bring it down in post versus the um, you know shooting 8K, which did film the full sensor. But is that still the case here, where it's probably preferable to do that? Or uh, yeah, I mean to me, it's like if you can shoot the max, then you may as well. And that card that we have, the media that comes with it, you can shoot four hours of 12K. So sure, you know, that's a lot. So yeah, I, it gives you the thing that I like about it when you shoot 12K, even if you're going to only finish in 4K is that you basically have a steady cam because if you yeah. shoot and you want to, you can either zoom into the different areas, but if you shoot handheld, you can just use stabilization and it'll look like it was shot on, on a steady cam. So right. there, there's definitely some great uses for it. The other thing is, you know, shooting wildlife or whatever, you don't have to get so close yeah. to the lion. Or, I mean, the thing that I always say is like, and I've said this since 4K came out, is like, if you have to shoot a high ISO, the higher the Ks when you, display it that all that noise gets averaged out right yeah and actually we have some new tools in davinci resolve to deal with noise uh that are ai uh uh influence uh noise reduction so i think you know we that's the best part about it is that we have the ability we have our own codec our own camera and then resolve so that they can all work together to get the best results yeah i i over the i'm normally a dp over the pandemic i kind of pivoted to being a colorist and uh Man, the, some of these updates that you guys put in Resolver are <laughs> excellent. The specifically the, unfortunately, you took my friend Jason Bodach's program with the uh, the he calls it hue shift. What you're the um, color density tool. Oh right, yeah. That was an excellent addition. The uh, film thing, you know, was an excellent addition. Uh, I was playing with them before I came out, and I, I'm I think those are. It's always just awesome to have native tools that work really well right. and you know give you a. Uh, decent playback and, and like the halation looks really nice versus some of the other ones where it sure. kind of looks like an overlay like it looks much more natural so I mean you guys are just killing it and it, I don't tend to fluff people like that ha, well I mean look it's uh, a lot a large team they do a lot of great work and it's been a long time and, and we never stop adding yeah oh uh, I did want to ask so this this hard drive does come out Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can show you. Is there a? Can you put other modules in there? There's like a dock. CF Express. No. Something? No. Th this is designed for ours, and okay. and we have we're gonna have a dock that you can uh, mount them. Uh, okay. Mount three of these. But it's just these. Hard yeah. Drives. And okay. there'll be eight and uh, and um, sixteen terabyte modules that mm -hmm. you can use. But you could also use uh, SSD drives and connect it uh, USB. through USB. Wonderful. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, again, guys. Again, wonderful job and uh, very Thanks. exciting. Take care. So these are the various sensors here. That looks like Super 35 full frame and the really nifty 65 millimeter sensor. But one thing I was told as we were walking away from that interview is a little addendum, is that uh, the Blackmagic camera app is coming to Android. Not yet, it's not out a uh, few weeks maybe a month, I don't know that uh, I didn't get a full timeline. It's not out yet, but for people like me who are on Android, Blackmagic camera app uh, is coming. So that's very exciting. Uh, yeah, once again, Blackmagic killing the game. We're gonna go on to the next one.